So some people have been asking me, how do I prepare data sets for other languages? How am I doing this for Tortoise uh, to train these other languages? So I'm going to show that in today's video. It might be like a multi-part series of just me going over what I do for the process. Um, so yeah, this is going to be pretty much unedited and uncut. So I'm going to try that out for formatting. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead, dive into straight up code and see what's going on. So things are a little bit messy, right? My camera just died. So I'm back now, but things are a little bit messy inside of the code here. So I'm going to do my best to try to explain the process up front first so that you can kind of understand what I'm going through um, in the code. So the way that I prepare my data sets um, are by finding playlists on YouTube or audiobooks online, downloading those, transcribing all of that. And then after transcribing it, I can then prepare that um, transcribed data specifically for Tortoise. So I have specific scripts that do all of the formatting needed for Tortoise. And then afterwards, um, I'll feed that and start training the Tortoise model. But this video is just focused on that data set preparation side of things. So um, I'm going to go through some of the scripts that I use to accomplish that. So let's go ahead and jump into the first one that I use. And that's this download YouTube playlist. Um, so this is just a simple uh, YouTube DLP script. So it uses YouTube DLP or YT DLP in order to download videos from YouTube. So uh, this one is straight up just ChatGPT. So I just asked ChatGPT to make me a script that could do this. That allows me to use a specific file path that contains a, a text file that has all of the YouTube playlist links that I want to download. Download. So this just downloads um, all of that and puts it into a folder name that I choose. So I've actually got a couple of data sets that I've already downloaded. Well, let me go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. Um, and that would be this, uh, this German, Hindi, Tamil, and then Vietnamese. So I've actually already downloaded several languages um, because the bottleneck isn't my download speeds. The bottleneck is the transcription right now. So I was able to download a bunch of data for some languages. So I know I said I was going to train one and I'm going to train Vietnamese first, but I will train all of these other ones subsequently afterwards. But all depends on how fast my uh, GPU can get through them. Now, once I have these downloaded, um, if you take a look inside, it's just the raw files and most of them are inside of a or stored as an opus. And so before what I was doing was that I was um, actually converting all of those opus files um, with this convert to MP3 script. So this script actually will take a folder that I feed it and convert all of that into MP3. doesn't matter if it's a WAV file, an Opus, or an M4A file. Um, it'll convert all of those into MP3s. So that's pretty nice, but I figured out that I don't actually have to do that. And I was wasting quite a bit of time because um, to transcribe all of those uh, MP3 files from the other formats um, just takes quite a bit of time. So. Instead, what I did was just feed those directly into my WhisperX script. So we'll jump into that now. Um, and if you, if you actually look down below right here, I have WhisperX currently running on the German data set. So it's uh, in action at the current moment. But this is, I would say, where most of the magic happens for the transcription. Without WhisperX, we wouldn't actually be able to do this very efficiently. So, um, uh, if I had to break this down to a couple of main components, uh, this would be um, sorting and transcribing. So the way that this does um, transcription is that uh, I'll call a function that will process the audio files and then with some parameters in here. So in this case, I'm using DE because that's the ISO code for uh, German. And then it'll go into this process audio file. Um, function. And inside of here, I have a couple of uh, declarations for variables to just format how I want to save the data inside of um, folders. So if we go to the left side here, uh, I've got a tortoise data folder. And inside of here are these folders called fine tune models. And now if I click on that, then I have the data set. So Inside of data set, I have my file splits, and these are where all of the transcriptions are. Now, inside of this folder, 
what I have are, um, let's bring this out a little bit more. What I have inside of here are additional directories, additional folders, but these are the names of the uh, audio file that I'm transcribing. And underneath it are all of the segments of that. So it's very linear, um, step by step. But all of these inside of here, the reason that I do this is so that I can find them afterwards. And so um, to kind of explain what I mean by that, if I go into this train.txt right here, in order to find those files in the tortoise training, what I need to do is put it inside of a folder named audio. Now, if I don't know what name the uh, file is actually going to be, then I will lose that connection and the model won't be able to train. So in this case, I've got um, the name of the uh, file. And then on to the right side of it is the transcription. So you can see that it's .mp3 and then the transcription. So the way that tortoise, the tortoise train text is formatted is it's audio path, bar or pipe, and then transcription. Now, Let's jump back into the tortoise script. Um, all this process audio file function is doing is just formatting it in the way that I just described. Now, um, there are a couple of um, cool things that I did for the script though. Uh, one thing was a continuation. So in the case that it does um, fail out or something like that, you need to stop later and continue. I do have this progress log, which is nice because I can stop the process uh, midway and we continue but uh for the most part that is the transcription part of uh making the tortoise data set for other languages but after that is actually finished i need to do a couple of things because the format that's inside of that isn't specifically uh what tortoise wants now i should probably make this all into one script but uh, all of this is kind of just, it's still kind of messy right now. So there's uh, these other scripts that I use to get them closer to the format tortoise needs. So I've got this merge folders uh, Python file. And what this does is, uh, you know how I was talking about underneath that wave splits folder. Uh, there are a bunch of different directories with the file name in it. What this does is it combines it all into one folder. So if I go to this fine tune um, models data set here, data set wave splits. Well, and it's actually going to lag here because it's quite large. But inside of here, uh, let me yeah, inside of here, I have this folder called combined folder, you can see I've got combined folder here. And it just slaps all of those files into one directory. So now I can put that, what I can actually do is just copy that folder into the training folder of Tortoise TTS, rename it to audio, and it'll be good to go. Um, but after that, uh, I do also need to resample all of the data from 44k hertz to 22k hertz. So there's one more script that I have to follow up with, and that's this um, resample to 22050 hertz script and this uses mp ffmpeg to convert all of that to 22k hertz the reason being is because that's what tortoise is expecting and i believe um i haven't actually tried it out but if you use uh frequencies or if you use um a sample rate that is higher you may get weird audio because of the way that uh well it only accepts a certain amount of uh, sequence tokens for the audio. So for each sample, you'll be able to fit less audio into it, so to speak, for um, Tortoise. So I think since if you do 44K, it's about two times 22K um, Hertz, you're going to end up only being able to process audio files that are six seconds long as Tortoise was designed for 11 second inputs. But that's just my speculation. Um, I haven't tried it and I haven't uh, verified the results of 44k Hertz, but I'll probably do that later um, once I finish training all these other ones. But once that is done, well, I can 
um, just put it inside of the AI voice cleaning repository training folder. So this is what I was talking about earlier, um, where I would just take all those combined folders, rename it. So I would go into training here and then let's take Spanish, for example, go into Spanish and that recombine the folder that I was talking about earlier. All I do is just rename it to audio. So that's the path that you need. So if I open up this train.txt file, if we take a look inside of here, we've got the audio path here, super long audio path dot MP3, and then the transcription here. So if I just put it side by side, let me show you um, how this kind of grabs it. If we go into the uh, file explorer on the left here, let's take a look at this first one. So it's going to be located inside of audio because of audio here. And then for this name here, 20 poemas para ser leidos en el tranvía. Um, you can see that we have this uh, tr segment right here. It's a super long segment. I should probably rename it. Um, I thought originally that these additional pipes would cause issues, but it doesn't look like it's causing um, issues for finding the path. But if we go and keep extending the name here, will eventually reach the end. So here we go. We've got the path to the file. Um, as you can see, it ends in two here. So you got segment two and you got segment two here. So that is how Tortoise is finding it. Um, it uses this first part as the path and then the second part as the transcription because what it needs is audio text pairs. So it uh, uses this audio file, uses this transcription, and then builds its knowledge inside of the autoregressive decoder um, for you know the text speech that we hear. And I'm not at that stage yet for the Vietnamese um, because I've got to finish. I've got to wait for the German data set to finish transcribing, and then I can start with the um, tortoise training for Vietnamese. So we'll be doing that in the in the following week. So stick around for the part two of this video where I use the data set that I transcribed and formatted for Tortoise and go over um, the results and outputs of that data set from, from there. So I'll do that in the following video. But... Um, I know some of you want a step-by-step -step tutorial on actually how to do all of this. Now that's going to be, uh, it's, it's going to take a little bit of time for me to get all of that, um, nicely packaged up so that I can teach it because yeah, it's a lot of just kind of mishmash right now of me trying to figure things out along with creating scripts that, that will allow me to accomplish the, uh, the training. So that may take a little bit of time before I get all packaged up. But for you tinkers out there that kind of just want to understand the general process, this is um, what I've been doing so far. And if you want a, um, if you want all of these scripts, I actually updated uh, my GitHub with all of these scripts. So here, let's talk back into the browser. Um, I actually have all of them inside of this tortoise data set tools. And these are all of my scripts and tools that I've been using. Now, I don't actually have a tutorial on how you can use them yet. But if you want to take a look inside of them, if you can read the code and all of that fun stuff, you can um, definitely go through them and see what I uh, what I have here. But uh, yeah, that's going to be it for today's little uh, brain dump on you guys. Actually, there's one more thing that I forgot to show and that was making the tokenizer. So I think that's the second most important part. And um, let's go over that real quick. So I've got a multi-step process for creating a new languages tokenizer. And um, let's see what the script is. Okay, here, let me actually go through it with you on how I do this. And since I have Vietnamese already transcribed, um, this will be perfect to show you guys how this works. So let's jump into this data set. So I have this file right here called train.txt. That's the one that I was talking about earlier that Tortoise needs. Um, now, in order to um, actually create a tokenizer for it, I need to be able to extract all of the transcription from that. So let me remove this train text that I have here. This was for Tamil. 
and I'm going to copy and paste this um, into just this main folder so that uh, we can see it. All right, so we've got this train text now and what I can do is run it through this other script that I have that'll take all of the transcriptions um, out of there. So this um, script that I have, extract underscore text from train data set, will allow me to uh, output it to a file that just contains all of the transcriptions. So let me run this. So start debugging, create a new instance of Python. Um, and there you go. We can see that we've got processed uh, 260K lines and they've been saved to this BPE text train um, file. So let's take a look at that one real quick. And what you'll see is you are now missing the, the path of the audio file and you've just got all of these um, raw transcriptions. Now, I don't think you really need to remove all the new lines. So um, that's why they're, they're all on new lines still. So once you have that, uh, what I have here now is a train BPE tokenizer um, script. And this uses the Hugging Faces tokenizers library to accomplish this goal. So what we can do here is um, instantiate a new object tokenizer and run through the entire process. So for the BPE trainer, we actually have a couple of parameters that we can pass in here. And these are our special tokens. So these, uh, think of these as the tokens that we want to manually put into the um, tokenizer uh, train file because what the tokenizer is actually doing is it's taking um, a bunch of text and it's creating a vocabulary list based on the frequency of um, how often certain words or certain characters appear inside of the data that you give it. And this is so that it can merge them and break them down into smaller components because it needs to tokenize them. And the reason this is important is because language models can only take in a certain amount of tokens um, before they start losing uh, context. And so the smaller that you can get the data, the more compact you can get the data uh, to feed it into the model, the more that the model can learn. And so for Tortoise TTS, the base one, the base model um, is stuck at a vocabulary size of 256. So that's the other thing that we have to instantiate here. And once I have those done, um, then all I have to do is just run this. So let's now run, start debugging this guy here. And uh oh, it's actually gonna um, rename it as Tamil BPE tokenizer. Let me change this to Vietnamese um, BPE tokenizer. And let me delete this Tamil one because now it's ruined because I already, I just rewrote over it. So let me rerun this right here. And on the left hand side here, you'll see um, a Vietnamese BPE tokenizer get. Um, uh, I mean, you should see one in here. So there we go. It just finished refreshing. So once that is done, we now have a tokenizer for Vietnamese. Now, if we take a look at the added tokens, these are the special tokens that I added. You've got your stop, you've got your unknown, you've got your space, and then you've got all of the numbers here. So that's zero through nine. And the reason I do that is just in case the model encounters numbers, it can kind of understand um, how they sound. And so if we go into vocab here, we can see that um, these things on the left are going to be the uh, vocab. So <laughs> this, I don't know why or the word, this might actually come from the new lines. So I might have to re rewrite the script to just remove or split out uh, new line characters so that it just does it all into one. So I'll probably do that later. But you can now see that inside of here, we've got these special characters. Um, so like these, A's and Y's, they've got the um, accent marks above it. Uh, you've got now them combined. So this is what I was talking about merging. So all of these are single uh, letters. And then once you get here, these merges are what starts appearing frequently inside of the data set. So uh, in this case, NG is our first merge. You can see here. So NG is our first merge. And what it's going to do is use this tokenizer number for the next time that ng occurs. So 
for example, we have ONG here, um, tokenized as 133. Now, what this does is it takes these, it took three possibly separate characters or tokens and merge them into one. So this is why the BPE tokenizer is very good at being able to compress everything um, down and to hopefully get less tokens. So now if it sees this character, uh, Kong, I believe, this is now all just one token instead of it being split into ONG and then KH, which would be two. So that's all it's doing for the BPE tokenizer. Andre Karpathy goes through it in way more detail. So go watch his video on tokenizers if you're interested in how that works for language models. This is uh, what we use for um, the tortoise training. And then down here, I have a language tag. Uh, this would actually be VI. So I forgot to change it from Tamil into uh, Vietnamese. But the reason that I have a language tag is you need to, um, inside of Tortoise, hey, let me jump into Tortoise real quick. If we jump into the um, AI voice calling repository, if we go into our um, cleaners folder, uh, I can find it by searching up um, English cleaners. Um, if we go inside of here, what ends up happening if you um, don't use a language code, it ends up using these English cleaners, which basically destroys any language that's not English. So I formatted it in a way to where um, if the language is English, it uses the English cleaners. Else, for all other languages, it defaults into the basic cleaners. So basic cleaners, it just lowercases things and I think it removes spaces. And then the reason I still have the language tag is for things like Japanese. Um, I want to process it in a different way. So we could do things by using a pi pi kakasi kakasi here. Um, I might actually change this to um, cutlet instead so that it can use cutlet to convert Japanese into um, romaji. But that, yeah, that's why I have the language um, code inside of the tokenizer here. So. Yeah, that is uh, tokenizers on other languages. I'm gonna be doing a little bit more of these uncut videos just because it's easier for me to produce because I don't have to do all these cuts, transitions, all of that. And yeah, that's gonna be it. I'd like to thank my members for supporting the channel and keeping me going. And uh, well, yeah, see you in the next video.